Hi, I'm Zane Lamprey. In this episode, I go three sheets to Hamburg. I drink, can I just do the show open? I want to do the show open! Okay, just watch the show, it's good. You are a mean son of a bitch. Every night, in every city around the world, it happens. People pour into local watering holes to, well, drink. It's my mission, that's me, to traverse the globe getting to know these different people and their drinking customs. Bellying up to the bar, and with any luck, making some new friends. Warning! Do not take a drink every time you hear the phrase German engineering in this episode. If you do, you might wind up drunk. You can check that out later, but first... Hamburg. Named after a castle built in 808 AD by Emperor Charlemagne, today it's known for its port, the second largest in Europe. And where there's a port, there's plenty of watering holes. With a drunken sailor, what shall we do with a drunken sailor? I'll take part in some nautical rituals. Fischergeist, right? You say Fischergeist. Attempt to break a world record. So all I have to do, more than three. And find out what happens when German engineering and alcohol combine. What is that? How did you do that? When I go three sheets to Hamburg. But before I begin my exploration of the city, there's a beverage that's produced just two hours away from here. In the small town of Wolfenbüttel that we really need to feature on the show. A somewhat mysterious substance that you can find in nearly any bar. Some believe it contains hallucinogens. Others swear deer blood lurks within its dark, foreboding bottle. It's undeniably one of the world's great liquors. If not for the taste, then certainly for the name recognition. Think fast. You're in a bar with your friends and you want to celebrate. What's the first shot you want to order? That's right. The one, the only, Jägermeister. In 1878, Wilhelm Mast founded Mast Jägermeister as a wine wholesale business. He later turned to vinegar production, but his son Kurt headed in another direction and developed the recipe for Jägermeister in 1934. As the drink spread around the world, the corporate campus spread across Wolfenbüttel. And as the host of the world's greatest drinking show, Yeehaw! I've been invited to kick it with the corporate bigwigs in their private bar. But thanks to my sweet German engineered ride, we make good enough time to stop at the Jaeger store and arrive fully geared up in Jaeger attire. You look awesome. I'm done driving. All yours. But we're still early, so good thing there's plenty of games to play around here to kill the time. I could kick Eric's butt all day long, but it's five o'clock. Time to let some Jägermeister kick my butt. This is Marcus. He's some kind of big shot international Jägermeister rep and apparently knows who loves this stuff the most. Who drinks the most? The most in the world, the U.S. The U.S. of A. Congratulations, everyone. Who's second? Germany, like always. And who's third? Curtis. So what exactly is Jägermeister? Time to consult the Three Sheets Encyclopedia of Booze. Jägermeister begins as a blend of 56 different herbs, blooms, roots, and fruits. Contrary to urban legend, there are no opiates or deer blood in this mixture, which is combined with alcohol and water. After about five months, the mixture is strained into oak casks where it rests for a year before being blended with more alcohol, sugar, caramel, and purified water to create the final 70-proof product, Jägermeister, which means Master Hunter. And there's stories about this, and you're gonna clarify those. Do you know about all I this? I know, thing? I know, I know the, I do the summary, okay? 
Turns out Marcus is pretty long-winded with his summaries, so we'll just give you the three sheets version. Once upon a time, there was this guy, Hubertus, who loved to hunt. He killed every critter he saw, even on holy days. This was bad. Anyway, on one particular Good Friday, he was deep in the forest and saw a huge white stag with its antlers illuminated in the center by a glowing cross. Hubertus saw this as a command from God to change his ways, so he became a missionary and ultimately wound up the Bishop of Liege. Today, Hubertus is known as the patron saint of hunters, many of whom request a blessing from him after a kill. You know what I like to do when I go hunting for deer? I like to shoot them, and then I like to release them. You know what I mean? I'd say it's about time to shoot a <laughs> shot of this stuff. And here at Jägermeister headquarters, they insist you drink it ice cold. You know what's interesting? Cold goes down a lot easier than a warmer shot. Yeah. That's the coldest shot of Jägermeister I've ever had. How cold is that? It's uh, zero degrees Fahrenheit. Zero? Zero. Introducing the Jägermeister tap machine. You know, the problem with Jägermeister, I find, is that it's just so difficult to pour. With this thing, it's just one flip of a switch and ice cold Jägermeister's right at your fingertips. German design, German engineering, German liquor, all at your fingertips. Jägermeister, a tune wild. Will you send me one? Yes. For free. We do. See what I just did? See what that happened? Now, you all know having a straight shot of Jaeger isn't all that smooth, but serving it ice cold helps suppress the notorious Jaeger face. When you have it a little warmer, it's like <laughs> I know this. If you have a warm one, what face do you make? <sighs> of course, another way to soften the blow is to mix it. This is a Jaeger colada. Basically, it's a pina colada made with Jägermeister instead of rum. Nice, huh? That's a really good drink. Yeah. Next up, another twist on a familiar favorite. Jägerinha. Yeah. Is that a Caipirinha with Jägermeister? You use brown sugar instead of white and substitute Jägermeister for the cachaça. But you also need to add a little swag. What the hell is that? It's light cube, yes. It's a light cube? Yes. <laughs> oh, that's like clever. <laughs> wow. You know what I'm finding? It's very easy with Jägermeister to mask the taste of alcohol. Because there is there's legitimately two shots in there. Yeah. If not more. And a little, little bit of sugar, a little bit of lime, and some lime juice. Wow. That's good, Jägermeister. Now it's time to see if I can create my very own Jäger cocktail that's worthy of this coveted menu. All right, so now we have ice cold Jägermeister. Okay, next ingredient. A light splash of vodka, followed by a little blood orange liqueur. See how I just play with it? And some tonic water. Now, Bionade. Bionic lemonade. It's German engineered organic lemonade. And just to keep things hopping, Maracujo. That's passion fruit juice to you and me. And finish with more crushed ice. This is quite simply called Zane is awesome in his Porsche, okay? So will Marcus think it's worthy? Wow, Zane's Porsche awesome is, is the awesomest, awesomest thing I've ever had. I'll accept that. Prost. Yup, this excursion to Wolfenbüttel has definitely been fruitful. I've added a drink to the Jägermeister corporate bar menu, confirmed delivery of my very own Jägermeister tap machine, and sucked down more than my fair share of Jäger. Awesome. Now it's back to the hustle and bustle of Hamburg for even more drinking awaits. Coming up, what will those crazy German engineers think of next? What the f is this? What is that? Day two in Hamburg, Germany. A city with more than 2,300 bridges. That's more than Amsterdam and Venice have combined. Truly a marvel of German engineering. But I'm here to build a bridge between the local booze and my stomach. So I'm headed to a vodka lounge called the Ice Peak. 
Now, I've had my share of vodkas. Russian vodkas, Polish vodkas, even Hawaiian vodkas. But here at the Ice Peak, Mo the bartender is gonna serve me German vodkas. More specifically, Mockenstetter's line of flavored vodkas. What's a Waldmeister? Melon? Mockenstetter makes a wide range of flavored vodkas, from apple to licorice. <laughs> I much prefer a Jägermeister to this. But the flavor of this one has us all stumped. Waldmeister. Dog? Cricket? Toad? No way? No one has any idea what this means. Looks like it's time to consult the Three Sheets Botany Manual. Waldmeister is the German word for woodruff, an herb with a scent likened to fresh hay. The scent comes from coumarin, which, if you saw the Poland episode, you'd know is a toxic compound also found in bison grass. Coumarin has been outlawed in the U.S. since 1978, so it's no surprise that the use of real Waldmeister in German foodstuffs has been banned since 1981. Mockenstetter's beverage is flavored with artificial ingredients that mimic the taste of Waldmeister. Waldmeister? Yes! Oh, okay. Oh, perfect. That's awesome. Yeah, it tastes just like Waldmeister. Mo likes it mixed with a little lemon-lime soda. What with your fingers? I have no idea. I'm not doing it. I hold it. Did I mention that these flavored vodkas are only 30 proof? No, man. <laughs> what? I tell ya. My fingers disagree with that drink. <laughs> if I'm gonna drink German vodka, I'm gonna have Mo work a little German drink engineering magic. Make me a drink with one of these that David Hasselhoff would, 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 would throw back. Prepare yourself for the ice hoffa. Ice hoffa. Ice hoffa? <laughs> okay, go ahead, make it. It starts with a strawberry syrup and sugar-rimmed glass. Wow, you are making a man's drink right there, buddy. Then a hefty pour of Mockenstetter's 80-proof non-flavored vodka. Banana. Creme de la banana. De la banana. Some blue curacao. That would signify the ice portion of this. Top with OJ, shake, and serve. Is that something a, a guy would drink? Taste it. Mo definitely engineered some colorful cocktails. But I've heard about a place just a short cab ride away where they mix German engineering and alcohol in ways never before seen on three sheets. It's called La Ciel, which means the sky, because it's perched on the ninth floor of the Royal Meridian Hotel. Do you like coffee? Yes. This is Axel. He's known as a molecular mixologist. Do you like alcohol and coffee? Yes, I like alcohol and everything. I like alcohol in my tuna fish. Molecular mixology uses scientific principles to alter cocktail ingredients on the molecular level. What is that? that? How did you do that? What did you just do? Tell me what's in there so I know I can do it. It's coffee. My friend. It's, it's coffee, some coffee and, and something else. And a powder made of oaks, which is uh, you which eggs? in the. Did you say oaks? Eggs? Oaks. Right? Eggs? Oaks. Like algae nature. Uh, Professor, why don't you go ahead and uh, run with this? Why, certainly, Zade. You see, Axel's talking about sodium alginate, a natural gum extracted from the cell walls of brown algae. For decades, the food industry has used it as a thickening agent. But recently, industrious mixologists discovered liquids diluted with sodium alginate more pliable skin when submerged in a calcium chloride water bath. The longer you leave the alginate infused blob in the bath, the thicker the skin that forms. You made a coffee ball. Can I just eat it? That's awesome. A more typical version of a hot shot is a blend of coffee and Galliano, a 60 proof herbal liqueur which is then topped with whipped cream. That's really cool. You could stop right now and I'd be impressed. Try it, tell me. <laughs> I might go home and make this and tell people that I invented it. Would that be all right? Well, no one until would hurt you. Until the show comes out. No one will believe that I'm smart enough to make it. You son of a bitch, Alex. 
exactly right, though. To flaunt his German engineering knowledge even more, Axel whips out some of his lab equipment. So, um... What the... is this? What is that? This device is known in the molecular mixology trade as a caviar box. When connected to a syringe filled with your favorite alginate dilute fluid... What's that? That's watermelon juice. Whoa. The assembled rig creates 90 droplets simultaneously. So-called caviar. This is magical. Axel takes these caviar-like droplets and serves them to me in a martini glass topped with foamed lemon liqueur. Like it? Mm. I like it very much. But not nearly as much as Axel's cosmopolitan foam topped with pop rocks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really loud. Mm -hmm. This is the loudest drink I've ever had. This is the loudest drink I've ever had in the show. I've had a great time today playing with vodkas and applying German engineering to drinks. But judging from the growing count, I think it's time to put an end to this. Science class is over. I'm ready to give my head a rest and find a place where people drink without having to think. So I'm off to Hamburg's historic harbor to drink in the simple style of the old salty sailors. Coming up, will I run aground on some rough language? Coast pop. Cold. Coast pop. I'm in Hamburg, Germany, where it's time to hoof my way over to the harbor for happy hour. My destination is a bar favored for decades by the local sailors, the High Fish Bar, which literally means shark bar. You know what you should have here is a, a shark with a cigarette in its mouth. That would be funny if you had that. Yes, this is here. Oh, you have it. Oh, you have it. Oh, OK, good. This is Kale. These days, he's a bartender, but he used to captain ships of all sizes. My biggest chip is um, uh, 120 meters. <laughs> uh, 120 meters is a rescue boat. Alex deserves to talk a little smack, because he used to captain 300 meter tour boats. His boat was, you put on your boot. It's not the, at the Schlickwatcher I moment. Know. You know, he's a troublemaker. Sorry, troublemaker. This troublemaker has a pretty good taste in beers. And he wants me to try a local favorite, Ostra. Even Kale is a fan. This is the best beer in the world? Yes. Why? He tells me the reason is clearly marked on the label. That, yeah. that's very wonderful. This is made with love in the heart of Hamburg. And if you see, it has a heart right there. It has an anchor because of the harbor here. Sure. Ein, zwei, drei, put, put it in, in your face. face! It's a nice, simple pilsner, which, thanks to its drinkability and affordability, has earned a reputation as Hamburg's working man's beer. Scheiße. Alex suggests that we throttle up and set sail for the land of hard alcohol with a bottle of his favorite nautically inspired liqueur. Yes. Coast fog. Cold. Coast fog. Coast fog. Coast fog means fog. you can't see everything. Fog! Fog. Fog. Castanabel yeah. Sternanis literally of... means coastal fog star anise. I'll give you one chance to guess what's in here. It smells like anise. Anise? anise. Yes, yes, yes. It's like watered down ouzo. That's not bad. If you saw the Lesbos episode, you know Ouzo is an anise-based liquor that appears milky when its alcohol concentration is diluted below 37.5%. It turns milky. This stuff is only 21.8% alcohol, so even in the bottle, it appears cloudy. Or, um, coast foggy. One more. No. If you've been keeping score, then you know that I've had quite a bit to drink today, from odd-flavored vodkas to scientifically enhanced cocktails. Add in a few beers, and this coast fog, by all rights, should be the point where I drop anchor and call it a show. But these salty dogs insist you can't visit Hamburg Harbor without participating in a local drinking ritual. Fischergeist means fisherman's spirit. According to legend, this 112-proof grain alcohol distillate, if consumed properly, has the power to protect you from bad luck, especially if you're a fisherman. So you, you light it, you light the shot, 
The next step, a toast to the spirit world. Krug und Krug gut aufgeführt. Am I wrong? Um, vom Flammenspiel im Hut. Lasst uns nun die Wäsche heben. Genau. Fischergeist! Right? You say Fischergeist! Lang so ihr Lieben. And then you yeah. put it out with a little mini fry pan and a mini uh, coffee okay. cup. <laughs> 56%. And as the shots go down, my expectations for a rough seas tomorrow go up. <laughs> Yup, after last night's performance, I am not rising too early this morning. This place has um, uh, an amazing traditional dish it's supposed to help my hangover, which I have, because I drank last night. A lot. The old commercial room has been around since 1795 and is located in an even older building built in 1648. David is the old commercial room's PR man. He works for this guy, Paul Rauka. Hello. Otherwise known as Butchie. You must try it. Butchie's offering a plate of his restaurant's signature dish, Labscouse. It's a mixture of corned beef, onions, and potatoes with some secret spices. Mm. It's good for a hangover. It's also good for an eating contest. The current record of three plates was set by Ralph Moeller, the famous German bodybuilder. I, have, I eat three, and I eat one bite of the fourth yes. one. I break the Go record. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. It's definitely a hearty dish. This is a lot. And when I hit the third plate, yeah. I'm not sure I'm up for the challenge. Oh, yeah. I don't want any more. But David inspires me to press on. Yeah. Oh, this is, this is the this final, is the final. For, the, for the record. Yeah. If you want to be part of the league where Ralph Muller is, then you have to finish. Of course I want to be in Ralph Muller's league. <laughs> I'm no glutton for punishment, but when the gauntlet's thrown down, let it be known that Zane Lamprey rises to the challenge. Huh? Page five. And the world Lapscouse eating record is mine. Champion of yeah. Lapscout, yeah. eh? <laughs> I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. For this. World champion of Lapscout. World record holder. Yeah, Ralph. Uh, this is a challenge for you. No? Somebody beat you up in, in your home country, yeah. in Germany. I came so to Germany and did it. You have to come here and eat you know four. What? Don't even say four that. in a row. He, he can't. That's the goal. He, he can't. He can't. Huh? No, he can't do it. I'm sorry. We will see. World record holder. Now, my what, best what friend is record holder. Thank you very yeah. much. What a trip! I created a new Jägermeister cocktail. Zane is awesome in his Porsche. Witnessed some amazing German engineering and set a world record. Hamburg, world record fun. That's my boss right there. The people yeah. watching this at home. Boss. The people in, people watching the show. Oh. The people in the camera. Is it good? Steven McKenna? Not here. No, it's not here. Okay. Ngreinskabot. Umbapshibat. Okay. Who is your favorite television personality? Michael Mittermeier, Biatch. No, so, what about Zane Lamprey? Who is she? <laughs>